G'day everyone, welcome to the weekly general update for the 8th and 9th of July. And uh, <clears throat> we had a holiday during the week in the US, Independence Day holiday, and uh, so trading on Thursday and Friday was a little bit restricted. Uh, we'll see the, uh, the full US trading session start up next week, and we've also got uh, the start of their reporting season as well on Monday night when uh, Alcoa uh, releases their results. So next week will be a very important week in the US. Uh, just a quick reminder, this is general advice only. So quick summary of what happened last week. Uh, the S&P in the end lost eight points uh, with a fairly substantial reversal on Friday night. And um, <clears throat> it had been trading um, significantly higher uh, prior to that. So the question is, uh, is this counter trend rally? So my, my fundamental position is that the main direction is down. We've had five waves to the downside from April. Uh, we're now completing a counter trend rally. I'm not 100% uh, sure yet whether that counter trend rally is fully complete or not. Um, we'll know that in, uh, in a few more days time. But uh, either way, it's not going to make a great deal of difference. I think when this counter trend rally does complete, if it hasn't already done so, then we're looking at another uh, move to the downside. And I'm looking at 1267 or 1207 as the objectives. But the more I look at the markets, I really don't think we're going to see anything severe. Um, I think there's just too much expectation in the market that um, that money printing is eventually going to occur. So I don't think the forces in the market are going to allow it to fall too far. Uh, the economic data in the last part of the week was less than inspiring, particularly in the US. Uh, the jobs data wasn't fantastic. It wasn't terrible, but it wasn't fantastic. So we've still got this situation where, um, you know, the, fun the fundamental picture is not all that great and they're not improving and it's almost a situation of is bad news becoming good news for stocks because there's the expectation that the poor economic data will invariably lead to more central bank action and I think that's a pretty logical conclusion because they've stepped up basically every time and I don't see any reason why it won't be any different this time but I will say that the impact of the central bank actions are getting less and less. When they first did it in 2008, 9, the impact was substantial. Uh, when they did it again in 2010, the impact was still significant, but less. And the impact last year, less again. And I think uh, we're going to continue to see that trend. Now here at, uh, at home, our, uh, our index um, gained 64 points on the week in the end. Uh, again, that's just a, a tiny issue, the difference between our market and the, tech, and the US market. And we're back close to technical resistance again at 4,200. And I guess the other thing notable out of the Australian index is that there's a huge number of stocks that are merely going sideways. Uh, they're really just bobbing up and down in a, in a sideways range, uh, certainly amongst the majors. There aren't too many trends happening at the moment. Now, of course, the key determinant that we should be looking at is the US dollar index. And there was a big move back towards resistance. When we have a look at the chart in a minute, um, you'll, you may remember there's two key support resistance levels, one at 81.5, one at 83.5. And the price has been fluctuating between there for some time. But uh, we did see a big move back up on Friday night, and it's the US dollar index that will really be the determinant of, uh, I think, where stocks go in the shorter and medium term. Now, if 83.5 breaks, which is currently resistance, then I would expect a sharp move higher because technically that will bring in a lot of buying for the dollar. Now, bond yields, uh, despite the announcement of um, out of Europe last week, which was fairly positive, and stocks certainly went up in Europe very, very positively, we've still got Spanish 10-year bond yields um, that sh sorry, that shouldn't say 10%, that should say 7%. Um, so they're almost back to 7% despite the um, ECB uh, decision. So everything that the central banks are doing has a short-term impact 
but it runs out of gas very, very quickly. So Spanish yields, after the ECB made that announcement, dropped from 7 down to about 6.3, but it's only lasted just a handful of days, and, and we're back at now at, uh, at 7%. So as I was saying earlier, the impact of central bank actions is just getting weaker and weaker. And Italian bond yields also went back up again above 6%, so not looking overly flash uh, in Europe still. Okay, let's have a look at a couple of charts to start with. The first one is the S&P 500. And you can see that we've, uh, we've got a framework here that we would have expected resistance at 13.63. We got that on the 19th of June. Um, the next resistance level is at 13.89. Now, we reached a peak on Tuesday night of 13.75. So we've not quite gone there yet. So that's why I'm thinking we might still just have a little bit more to the upside yet. I'm not, not sure on that. But whether we have already peaked out or whether we've got one last gasp up towards 13.90, uh, I'm not sure. Um, there is a pattern that I've observed over the years in the US market, and that is that markets tend to rally into reporting season. So the expectations that, that profits will be, will be better than expected. And then about a week or 10 days into the start of the US uh, session, which takes us through to around about the, the 18th to the 20th of July, uh, we quite often see the market then start to top out and, and head back down again. Now, there is a Federal Reserve meeting on the 20th of July where they could, um, they could either make an announcement or not make an announcement. So... Those things are all kind of lining up, so possibly somewhere around about the middle of the month through to the 20th uh, could be quite a decisive point in the market. But as I said earlier, my view is the primary direction is down. We had five waves down from April. We're getting three waves to the upside in a counter trend rally, and then I would expect the downside to resume. Let's have a look at the US dollar index. So key levels here at 81.5 and 83.5. And um, you can see we had uh, three very strong moves in the US dollar over the last three trading sessions. So if it does break 83.5 and, and breaks it forcibly, then I think we'll see a fast move uh, towards probably at least 86, 87 and possibly even close to 88.5. Now, if that's the case, commodities will go down uh, just purely you know, due to their correlation to the US dollar. And you also see pressure on stocks as well. So really the currency is what we should be looking at more than anything else because that's going to dictate the direction for the market. Now there are a couple of confusing things that really don't go along with um, a, a top in the market. And one of them is the VIX index. This is the VXO, which is the, the uh, volatility index on the um, S&P 100. It's the primary volatility index. And you can see it's still down around about, um, well, between 16 and 17, which is really quite low. So it's, and that's another reason why I don't believe we'll get a significant fall in the market, because markets do not uh, fall heavily from these sort of levels. Um, so I, I just don't think that uh, we've got the kind of environment where we may get a, a very heavy, heavy fall. Now let's have a look also at the uh, Russell 2000 <clears throat> index. And, it, and again, this is another piece of evidence that is um, that really supports the fact that we may not get a severe downturn we could still get downside, but I'm talking about a severe downturn. And that's the fact that the Russell 2000, which is the small to mid-cap stocks, has clearly been rising quite strongly. And it's not that far off its medium-term highs. Now, if the, if the market was really in trouble, I can assure you that the small caps would not be trading as they are. So, again, another reason why I think, yes, we'll get some downside, but perhaps nothing overly significant. That can always turn around, of course, with, uh, with some bad news, but at the moment, it's certainly looking fairly resilient. Now, this is our, uh, 
our index, the um, ASX 200, we've got key resistance at 4200. That's a key pivot point in the market. Uh, we got back up to 4175. It's possible we might have a little bit more upside in our market yet, but uh, I'm still looking for lower levels uh, in our market. Now, while we're here, let's just have a look at uh, gold. You can see sharp move down in gold on Friday night. But if we look at this on a weekly chart, you can see we're really into our uh, eighth week now, basically between 15.50 and, and 16.50. So there's a few sharp moves up and down, but basically it's not much more than a, than a big consolidation occurring. Uh, let's have a look at the stock indices that go with that. This is the GDX. And you can see also it, it's had a nice recovery, um, but really has been going sideways since then. And let's look at the, probably the most widely followed index, which is the Huey index, and looking very similar. So not a lot of encouragement in um, in those uh, charts in the short term, but um, they've certainly rebounded off their lows. Let's have a look at oil. Uh, this is Brent crude, but let's have a look at the um, at the main one, which is um, light sweet crude. We had a significant drop from 110. We got down to 78. Had a huge rebound on two sessions last week, but then finished Friday night with the US dollar moving up so strongly. Uh, oil sold off. Uh, again, probably about 4 or 5%. So not looking particularly flash there from oil. So oil is certainly saying that there's uh, economic troubles ahead, but the stock indices in the States are not really reflecting that. So we, we certainly do have some uh, confusing data, to say the least. Okay, so just to summarise on gold, we ended up losing $15 on the week, but it was really some... Uh, pretty positive moves amongst that. We've got technical resistance in this 1620 to 1650 region and I wouldn't say that another a break of that 1550 support and maybe a, a, a quick drop down to 1450 might finally clear the way for gold. Uh, my view is absolutely unchanged in the medium to longer term. I, I fully expect to see gold above $2,000 an ounce within 6 to 12 months. Uh, we had 34 months of, of uh, consistently rising trend in gold. We've now been consolidating uh, for 10 months. That's not unusual. We could go a few more months yet in consolidation before we hit the lows. It still doesn't change the picture at all about where I think gold is going. So if you are a bit of a gold uh, bull and you've got positions in gold, or you may even own gold bullion, then I certainly wouldn't give up on it yet. Now, copper fell a little bit on Friday night to $3.40, but again, this is another one of these conflicting indicators. We've got oil looking very weak, but we've got copper remaining quite remarkably strong. And at $3.40, most copper producers are pretty profitable. And... Um, there's the chart on copper. There's the six-month chart. You can see we lost a little bit of ground in the last uh, couple of days, but it's um, it's still looking pretty robust. With most of the most of the decent quality copper producers having a cost of production of less than a dollar fifty a pound. So with copper trading at three dollars forty, you can see they're um, they're still extremely profitable. So just to finalise. In terms of the, the most likely outcomes, um, I think we will probably see markets just stumble backwards and forwards into the start of the US reporting season, uh, depending on how that goes. Um, I believe that the US corporates are at the top of the cycle uh, in terms of margins and, um, and earnings uh, and, and probably PE multiples. So, I don't see a huge amount of upside from here. I think there's more downside risk than upside risk. Um, but uh, it doesn't necessarily mean that, um, that the market needs to fall apart either. Now, the results 
that the companies come out with relative to what the market expects will definitely determine the near-term direction. Now, it's impossible for us to know what it is that the market is expecting. So we'll just have to wait and see how those results come out. In terms of your current exposure because of those uncertainties, uh, I would keep plenty of cash at the moment. There's nothing wrong with being in the market, but I would probably have a bit of a balance between long and short positions and, uh, and I would have plenty of cash up my sleeve to utilise. The other thing that's important is um, don't get caught with a fixed view of what's going to happen because really the markets could go either way. So I would just keep an open mind and just basically play the market as it comes. So that's it for this week. Talk to you next weekend. Cheers.